So I get asked the question all the time from friends and colleagues, how do I manage and maintain all of my dot files across all my different operating systems that I have, including my Unix boxes and my Mac OS machine as well. This allows me to store all of the different configuration files that I need to make my operating systems feel very customized to myself. This includes storing things like my bash and ZSHRC files all the way to my NeoVim and VS Code configurations respectively as well. All of these are stored inside a Git repository, which means they are version controlled as well. So you can go back and forth between your main and maybe a more testing or develop branch that you maybe have different settings that you want to do. And you can also install and maintain and manage a lot of the scripts, aliases, and everything you might want inside your bash RC files. So let's get started. So you can see here, we're inside a folder with a Git repository. In this case, it's my dot files that I have on github.com. This is where actually I contain all of my folders for different applications that I want to make sure are installed and configured correctly on each of my systems. And I split these into individual folders. So if we do a quick LS or LA in this instance, we can actually see there's lots of different folders here, some called bash, some called ZSH, a VS Code folder and a NeoVim folder, for example. And there's also other folders that we'll get to in a moment called personal and GitHub. So if we cd into this directory, we can actually see there's only one file in here. So if we do a quick ls on this folder, we can actually see that there is a .zshrc file in here now, which actually contains all the configurations for our ZSH shell. Now, the interesting thing about this is actually if you do a quick um, pwd, so uh, get my current working directory, you can actually see that we're nowhere inside my home folder as my home folder would be home slash geekmasher. So the next question you might be asking yourself is how do I get from this development slash dot file slash ZSH folder into my home directory where ZSH can properly load it up correctly this configuration file. And this is actually where we're going to use a tool called Sto. Sto is actually a utility that's built by the GNU Software Foundation that allows us to automatically create sim links um, or symbolic links between certain files and folders into our home directory. A symlink is a file or folder that points to another file or folder, so we can actually create virtual links between one file on the operating system to another. So Sto manages and maintains all of these symlinks for us, so we don't have to write an ln-s to actually create a symlink between a target and a source directory. So let's go back to the root of our repository now and take a look at some of the other examples. So another example would be our bash folder right here. This actually contains our bash RC file. So if an example that you're using bash and not ZSH, you can actually load in a bash RC file. So if you drop in just the normal shell using bash, you can use this configuration file. If we take a look at our NeoVim configuration folder, you can see here it's slightly different. This is actually a directory. And what you'll find under here as well is there is a NeoVim directory. And this actually correlates exactly to the folders that you would see inside your home directory. One of the beauties of using Git is you can use submodules to your advantage where you can have privated repositories that you can pull in at clone time. An example of this is actually having a work and personal repositories respectively that you can pull in only when needed. So how we have to think about this is that each of these folders gets mounted on top of our home directory. So now let's take a look at our home directory and we can see there's actually no reference to any sim links inside this home directory. In this case, there's no ZSH file, but there are, is no bash RC or new Vim configurations. And what the interesting thing about this is now we can start looking into stowing these. How this is done is by running the stow command with a dash T for target. We can actually select the home directory as our target. So this is where our sim links will be mounted to. I'm going to use a quick dash V just to set verbose mode. And then I'm going to select the ZSH folder. And what this will do is every file inside that folder will now be mounted correctly into our home directory. So now if we take a look at our home directory, we can actually see at the bottom here, there's actually a correct sim link for this. And if we did a quick cat of our ZSH.RC file inside our repository, you can see this. But if you did a quick cat of the ZSH file inside our home directory, you'll actually see that they are exactly the same. Now we have all this, we can actually create an install script to make sure this is automatically stowed upon installation of the repository. 
This can actually be done by creating a script. For example, I have one that I built earlier that is just a sample one where we're actually taking a list of directories. In this case, uh, I've selected bash, but maybe I want to also add ZSH in NeoVim as an example. And when I run this now, what will happen is it will iterate through each of these folders. The first step will actually make sure that it deletes the stowed files. This is just to make sure that you don't have any collisions and if you try to reinstall on top of each other. And then finally, we're running the same command that we had run earlier with the stow command. And this allows us to then automatically reload the shell. So once we run this install script, it'll automatically for us install. So now if we install this script, we can actually see that it will actually install and create all of the symlinks for us that we need to make sure this is working. In this case, you can see here there was a bash RC file that was loaded in, all of the NeoVim configurations, and also the ZSH files. The beauty of Stow is that it also allows us to not have file collisions as well. So if you have multiple folders that contain things like your work scripts or your personal scripts that you have for certain environments but not others, you can actually store these inside folders that are named exactly the same and it actually doesn't cause collisions. And if you take a look at something like the config folder, there's actually lots of different symlinks and folders in here for lots of different things. And if we created a symlink of just config that was inside our NeoVim folder, all of these other tools would actually fail and not run. But because we're using Stow, it is smart enough to actually determine when it should create a full path symlink or it should only create partial symlinks as well. And that's it. That's how I manage and maintain all of my dot files. I use Git for version controlling all of my different configuration files. And I use Stow to automatically maintain all of my symlinks between my repository and my home directory. So I hope you learned something and I hope you have a lovely day. Take care.